Okay, so the recording has just started. Um, so for anyone who couldn't make it or who's watching this video, if we do uh, decide to keep it at the end, um, a bunch of us around the country, uh, well, uh, around the world, actually, we've got representation from Berlin and uh, Amsterdam, I think, wasn't it? Um, uh, London and Brighton, uh, and we are coming together to explore uh, how to set up a citizens' assembly and to do it well, um, just to sort of share our insights, our wisdom, um, and experience to help each other to do this at a local level. Um, so that's the purpose of this call. Um, talk a little bit sort of about structure. Um, I've got an hour for us, so people need to shoot off, no problem. Um, perhaps some of us might feel like we want to hang around a little bit after an hour, but I'm kind of aiming for, for an hour, sort of generally. Um, I can see a bunch of people have put questions in the Google Doc for the agenda, so that feels really cool. We're kind of almost doing a bit of an assembly, sort of online in a way, so that feels really good. Cool. Thanks for chipping in on that. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through these questions, um, and I'll facilitate, but I, I'm not a very experienced facilitator, and I would really welcome any sort of constructive um, interactions. If you have a suggestion or you have a sense that we're moving too quickly or slowly, or you have a fear, I really welcome that and invite that. Um, I'm going to mainly be focusing on just sharing the airtime and, and how we can make the most of each other's experiences. That's how I see my role. Um, so cool. We've said a little bit about each other already. Um, we have, I'm, I'm aware that there's a couple more people on the Google Doc and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little concerned that they, they're struggling, they might be struggling to join us, but I think we, you know, that's one of the best bits of it being recorded. We just crack on, I reckon. Um, Okie dokie. So, um, I know sort of in terms of framing perfect structure or anything like that before we sort of jump in. Cool. Um, because sometimes I sort of forget very important things. Oh, I haven't really introduced myself very much. Um, I'm also in Brighton, like Les. Uh, so Les and I have been working on um, getting a citizens' assembly in in Brighton. So just sort of early days on that. And as he sort of touched on, uh, there is quite a lot of bite, it seems. So we're quite excited uh, here um, with getting this moving. We have a little team really interested in it. So yeah, it'd be great to sort of. Um, explore how best our next steps could be formed so um so yeah i've put in here um any important updates in the field so i just thought it'd be nice just to create an opportunity in case there's very recent news that's emerging that could be worth knowing um does anyone have anything in mind i mean obviously the uk is, <coughs> has announced fairly recently uh the uh, an interest in a sort of national citizens assembly um yeah, please, Linda, go. Um, yeah, so myself and another member of the citizen, you can hear me okay, can you? Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, myself and another member of the Citizens Assembly Working Group um, met yesterday with Chris Shaw, who is um, an MP who is heading up the Citizens Assembly commissioned by the select committees. Um, and uh, I think it was quite a productive chat that he was quite perceptive to listening to our ideas. Um, and yeah, there was one or two things that we had to push him on. I was quite keen to push him on the fact that, you know, 2050 is obviously way too late. So why waste time discussing that and how to get to that date? So he kind of then said, oh, well, it's actually quite flexible and maybe the Citizens Assembly will, uh, you know, maybe we'll ask them if that's an acceptable date and maybe they'll have the opportunity to redo that. And so actually, I'm just remembering that one of the first things that I should say about that Citizens Assembly is that it's commissioned by select committees. Just in case people don't know, select committees are uh, kind of groups of MPs that are, um, there's kind of one roughly for each of the government departments and they're supposed to keep those government departments in check. And um, so they do their kind of own independent research and they 
then make recommendations to the government. Um, they've said that, that those recommendations are often ignored and we think that they're, you, they kind of want to use the Citizens Assembly to give them more legitimacy in their advice to the government department. Um, and so it seems like this Citizens Assembly really is a kind of, I mean, because those select committees themselves don't actually really have that much power. So this Citizens Assembly that they're commissioning is very much a public consultation process which contrasts with a type of citizens assembly you can do, where, which is one that actually has some power. Um, and maybe we'll get into the kind of legality, you know, the binding um, and how much power it has later as well. Um, but yeah, so he was uh, quite, yeah, so it will be a public consultation one. It seems like they they are quite keen for it to be quite, flexible that um on term in terms of you know their their um, the question that is set to the assembly um but i think generally it will be a great first step and we we had another meeting with mps and um citizens assembly experts in which um yeah we kind of we we kind of talked them through a lot of the process because they're a little bit um unclear um about it themselves uh but yeah so it is it i think this could serve as a kind of pilot something that can be used to kind of wake everybody up and make them realize what a powerful tool this can be and um get the public talking about it hopefully we've told them that you know they really should spend a lot of money on the media around this um, and spend a lot of time and effort you know it should be on the front page of newspapers it should be televised it should be talked about a lot basically um so this will be kind of hopefully a good something that that that's quite good in terms of making you know kind of proof of concept making people realize that it's actually a really useful tool and um, but yeah just to reiterate that from our standpoint um, of the National Citizens Assembly Working Group. One, we're really happy it's going ahead. It's a great first step. Two, we're a little bit, oh, sorry, someone's following me. Um, where was I? Two, it was commissioned by select committees and not the government. So therefore, it's really nothing else. It's nothing to do, sorry. It's really nothing to do with the Citizens Assembly that we want. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I have another point, but I've just forgotten it. Um, one other thing that I want to say is that in terms of citizens' assemblies on a local level, which are also great, but they are also not, uh, you know, it is our firm belief that the scale of action needed to deal with this emergency is on the national level and that's why we are continuing to uh, advocate for a national level citizens assembly and we really see local citizens assemblies as a way to um you know kind of proof of concept around the country and to get local people involved and get them understanding what it is but we also hope that on a local level, people will also lobby their MPs for a national citizen. Um, sorry, I just kind of snuck that little message in there at the end. I probably yeah. rambled on too long, so I'll hand it back over to you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and I also I wonder if also, yeah. um, like just the actual practice of how to participate in them and just the passion for them i guess the motivation for them will, will for a national citizens assembly i guess um could be fueled partly by us actually experiencing or even if we're not selected to be directly involved in it just being a, just witnessing one happening in our local area and going wow that's really cool um i think could really help us go yeah shit, this needs to happen on a national scale because i think there's you know a lot of people are excited by the idea of it but i suppose don't necessarily know what a national level citizen assembly looks like um i'm also like kicking myself for thinking like i mean i would like to keep the focus on um 
or quite largely on local but i'm just i'm just appreciating even more that you've you've brought this piece linda and your your sort of national angle because of course we have people from other several countries here um in this call and maybe other countries as well watching the the recording if we keep it so yeah you know like there could be maybe some of what we discussed today will be transferable to other countries as well, on, on a sort of national level um okay happy to move on um so i just thought uh just one sort of more piece before we jump straight into stuff and i thought really succinct would be great but i just wondered if it might be nice just to know a little bit more about each other's relevant experience in this so maybe just less than a minute each um is that cool or do we feel like we have time to kind of know just a little bit about our kind of our sort of backgrounds, not like a whole CV, but just it might be nice to know. Maybe we even want to um, chat with each other one to one afterwards if we click with someone on a certain thing. Yeah, well, let's just go for that quickly. So, um, you know, Les and I did this the other day when we we had our sort of local gathering. So, um, I have I'm a filmmaker mainly. Um, and um, I've done a bit of relevant filmmaking for a friend of mine who's done, they're not legally, technically citizens' assemblies, but um, very similar to random selection um, and people shaping stuff around transport and parking and road usage and, and stuff like that. So I've, I've been to a few of those assemblies um, facilitated by him. He's called Andy Pace, um, and I've also uh, collaborated a bit with Demsoc and Involve um, and yeah, just generally really interested in uh, democratic innovation, um, both the sort of online and offline sort of aspects of it for, for a long time, been really interested in that digital democracy and these sort of things. Um, so that's a little bit of um, my experience and, and stuff. Uh, does someone else want to just say a few words about kind of what experience or resources they, they uh, need to bring into this? I can say something. Um, don't really have much practical experience, just uh, theoretical politics students, this kind of stuff. Um, interested in it on a, and also studied it a bit, like democratic innovations on a theoretical level. Uh, what's maybe interesting on the practical level is um, that I'm part of this international youth climate network, which is called Yango. I'll put it in the minutes. Um, and it hasn't quite worked out yet, but for like a couple of years, people are experimenting to have international participatory political processes. Um, and as I said, because of missing resources and because it's really international and has like goes, yeah, it's established in many different countries. It's really difficult to set this up, but there are a lot of ideas to set up something like um, similar to a project by WW Views, which uh, is the idea that through participatory processes on an international level, you give input to the climate negotiations. So this is kind of where my interest also comes from. And it's quite nice now that XR brings in so many new ideas and so much schwung uh, into this discussion. Great. I will put this in the minutes, the names of these uh, networks. Yeah, thanks for those minutes, Lana. Uh, so for anyone who wants to see the minutes, they're just in the Google Doc at the bottom. That's fantastic. Yeah, anyone else want to talk about their sort of experience, relevant sort of experience that they're, they're bringing? Don't have to. Do you want me to say something like? Yeah, show me. Yeah, go. Um, I um, am in Brighton. Um, I work in uh, education. I work in a primary school um, and have seen the growing um, youth climate movement um, here in Brighton and been very encouraged by it. Um, and also see it as a, a huge um, legitimate challenge to the status quo. Um, my background is in international development, um, 15 years working in different countries in East Africa. Um, and um, over the past 10 years or so, I have been involved in a local community group that's been advocating for more sustainable living. Um, and most recently petitioning and lobbying the council in Brighton 
to declare a climate and biodiversity emergency and having you know having got that win fairly easily um we're now in a position of wanting to follow up with them and get them to elaborate their plans for actually putting that into practice um i suppose i see my kind of um experience i i don't have any particular experience of um deliberative or participative participative democracy practice um but i see my role as being one of making connections um between different groups of people um and building alliances and support for um change processes mm -hmm. nice mate love it really cool. all right cool uh anyone else want to share a little bit about themselves or their experience i'm going to give it yeah i can i can talk um, briefly this is Joe. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. How oh, good. Okay, so I am an economist um, specialized in geopolitics. Um, I've been traveling for about four years to find out what's really going on in this planet. <coughs> and uh, I actually saw with my own eyes what everybody says regarding the climate change and uh, what's happening to local communities and all this. And uh, when I came back to Berlin, I decided to write a book. For two years, I got statistics and so on. And I wrote the book, and now it's, it's, it's available. Um, and I realized that uh, we have to do something about it, and very quick. And uh, quicker than I thought. So I joined XR. And I've been to uh, many uh, positions in it organization, law, politics, and within politics we have uh, um, uh, citizens' assembly and people's assembly, and we start to gather all this uh, information about how it works, how to do it, and we got some contacts with politicians, with the companies doing uh, citizens' assembly, and um, so this is my my background and the last thing was my training course with Linda Doyle, which was uh, amazing last week. It was very nice, thank you very much. So I'm now looking for a place in, in to actually give the first talk and uh, maybe other places in, in Germany as well. So maybe in a few weeks and then in September. That's it. Fantastic, thank you for sharing. Just wanna welcome uh somebody who's just joined your name is coming up as mn um oh. do you like to say hello oh you've just muted yourself yeah yeah you're muted right now yeah. can you hear me now go for it hello yes we can hi i'm miriam sorry it took me a while to set this up and there i am <laughs> hi miriam um, um so you're talking about experience right yeah yeah um and feel free to also yeah to say a little about yourself where you are um yeah a little of your sort of experience and background a bit so we can make sure that we make the most of each other's experience as we go through the call yeah all right yes my name is miriam uh, i'm based in amsterdam um i don't really have any practical experience with citizens assemblies uh, i'm uh, yeah, an academic. I do research in sociology and cultural studies, and I've yeah spent the last weeks just trying to do research on citizens' assembly and starting to understand a bit how it works. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, awesome. All right then. So, um, and and also Miriam, for anything you missed at the beginning, um, this is uh, recorded. So what we agreed at the beginning is that uh, all of this right now is being recorded. This video. Lena also um, taking some minutes that are at the bottom of the Google Doc. Um, and then at the end of this call, we'll just check for consent on whether we're happy for the video to go as an unlisted video on YouTube in case we want to share it with people. And if a single person objects, we'll delete it. OK, so um, I'm seeing a, there's a question in here from Ian, and he's not here. Um, I'm going to skip it unless somebody decides to take it as one of their questions. Um, I just want to make sure that all the questions we explore are 
under, everyone understands them and they want to talk about them. So Ian had put in, how do we manage the different expectations and understanding? And I'm not totally certain what exactly he means by that. Um, so unless anyone wants to take his question. Okay. Ah, oh, hello, Joe, you have face. <laughs> All right, so we'll skip that. Um, so is this your question number seven here, Joe? Who would organize the Citizens Assembly, like local government, independent organization, and what role, if any, is does XR play? Is that your question, Joe? You're muted. You just have to unmute yourself, Joe, uh, at the top. This is a question that came to our group. Um, who's going to do it? I mean, we may not have, or we did not have the skills to actually do the whole process. But then the question was, should we do the whole process? And then we got in contact with other companies that were happy to do that. But then if they do that, we are outside of the process. So, so that we were talking a lot about it, but that nothing has uh, had been decided on this, but it's just a, a general question. So how do we do this? Okay. I'd uh, welcome anyone who has a response to that. That's um, free flow. Anyone got some thoughts on that? I can't tell if anyone's speaking, just check you're not muted. Yeah, yeah, go, Linda. Go um, for it. Yeah. I could talk about that a little bit, I guess. Um, so it needs to be organized by a professional organization that has uh, experience in running deliberative democracy processes. So XOR's role really should be minimal in the organ or, or, or not. Uh, XOR should not be involved in the, um, in the organization um, and ideally neither should the local council be involved. So it would be an organization and um, I can share documents with you in just a sec which we're going to be posting very soon, which has, um, there's maybe, there's only a handful of these organizations in the UK. Um, um, and you might find more if you search on participedia.net, which is a really useful resource um, across the whole of the spectrum of deliberative democracy. Um, but yeah, so XOR is, is just playing a role of, advocating and lobbying for the citizens assembly um, and also we see our role as uh, kind of trying to ensure you know as as part of that we want to ensure that we want to we get high quality citizens assemblies so we want to advocate for that too and that might involve kind of designing a you know at the national level what we're doing is designing our ideal citizens assembly that would be kind of as a more fleshed out um, version of the third demand. And we will be hopefully sharing more details about that soon. Um, but the point is to go to government and say, this is you know, what we want and this is what we would consider um, you know, necessary to have a citizens assembly that is able to tackle the scale and scope of this issue. Um, but it would ultimately, ultimately, we want um, the organizers, uh, such as Involve or the RSA or My Society or the Democracy Society, um, to we would, you know, they they would have to review this and take on board our kind of recommendation of the design and the proposal. And ultimately, it's them who has the final say on the design. Um, yeah so yeah i hope that's clear any more questions on that or yeah joe i would yeah. like you to um i'm noticing a few of your questions around this kind of topic of like how well how xr is involved if at all in various aspects and um what exactly independent means so i would just encourage you to make sure your questions are answered so i'm kind of handing over to you a bit uh joe <clears throat> um you're still on mute so yeah i just go back to, to to the questions yeah um thanks for that linda by the way 
Okay. Okay, so um, as far as I understood, um, we should not be into the process of sortition, choice of experts, facilitations, taking notes, anything like that. But somehow we should um, make sure this is of a high quality. So we should be um, somehow comparing what was what is going on, what this private that this company, for example, is is doing in terms of organizing this CA, and uh, make sure that there is there is transparency, and that uh, the process is uh, a process that is uh, the best for a good outcome in, from the CA. So if if this is what we we should be doing then we we have to actually uh, work somehow in um tandem in, in in connection with this organization that is actually doing the the, the, the citizens assembly is that right in, in, in connection with this organization um so has it not necessarily so so i'll do i'll give the example of camden and um, which is the borough of London, just for the international people, um, and they, you know, so often what happens is that the local council, whoever it is, um, when they announce the citizens' assembly, they announce some of the details. Um, and for example, Camden announced that it was going to be a very short process and it wouldn't really have any power and things like this. So. Exor Camden um, sought advice from us and. Uh, we kind of, you know, told them, uh, if you look on our website, actually, there's some, you know, here is some 12 key standards that should be met. And so from that, they, you know, compared that with the uh, Citizens Assembly announced and the details released by Camden, Camden's uh, local council. And they, you know, then they wrote an article um, kind of calling Camden out a little bit, um, which yeah to kind of highlight you know the you know the shortcomings of the process so that's one way of uh, and and they also wrote an, uh, a letter to the local councillor who was in charge of this process for example and um, so just basically you can be very clear about you know what you find unacceptable about the process and this is a way to you know make that clear to them and lobby them to make it uh of a higher quality and um, without you being being kind of directly involved in the in the design and um, and being involved with the the organization that are running the citizens assembly and um, so yeah maybe it would be good to get in contact with them too but uh that might you know you don't want to do anything where you know definitely from our perspective extinction dwelling doesn't really want to have undue influence on the process either because you don't want it you know if the assembly comes out with very rad radical uh, claims and then people aren't happy with this some might go back and see that actually extinction rebellion had a hand in the process it might kind of delegitimize that citizens assembly so you want to be careful there that you're, you know, you're saying things publicly and you're just advocating for a higher quality citizens assembly um, and advocating for a range of experts representing a kind of diverse range of views. And um, so you want to make sure that you have the ones like um, Jem Bendel and, and the kind of more radical uh, climate experts there. But yeah, I would just make sure that you're doing things kind of um, in a transparent way yourself. That makes sense. Did that answer the question or? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Clear. Thank you. Awesome. Um, Joe, are you? Are you? Have you got all the um, responses you were hoping for for your sort of those four questions you put in the Google Doc? Yeah, I think I got uh, all the um, answers. It's just the last one, which is a bit tricky one, is uh, related to the uh, independent. Um, it is independent organization that will be organizing the CA. So independent from the government, independent from, uh, for example, 
um, not <coughs> from the industry, right? Uh, preferably. So should, should we be checking this? Should we, should, should we be checking to see if the uh, 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 company doing this uh, citizens assembly is uh, is uh, has no tendencies towards the government or towards uh, billionaires or towards uh, I don't know. So this yeah. is uh, yeah. Please go go, Linda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a really good question. Um. So basically, yes. Uh, and try and list some investigative journalists to try help you out with that. Um, the the experts themselves, they are supposed to um, be, you know, the, or if if it's if it's a proper professional organization that is running the citizens assembly, and um, they should be getting the, any experts there who are presenting to the assembly, they should be disclosing uh, any vested interest they have, you know, that their think tank is funded by the fossil fuel industry, anything like that, that should definitely be disclosed. But yeah, um, it is also it is also so that any, you know, any kind of person having a say in the in this um in the process should also be disclosing any other vested interests they have um so the tra the whole process is supposed to be transparent um but you know how exactly you do that or how exactly you enforce that is a little bit tricky um what we're advocating for is an oversight body which is made up of uh, special interest groups and perhaps members of government and they should be checking the whole process the whole way along they could should be they should be allowed to sit in on any meetings design meetings anything they would not have any input directly let's say but they would be there to observe and observe that the process is being conducted in a impartial and um, neutral manner um is that local yeah. You're talking about Linda. Um, yeah, I mean, so I'm guessing that, that that would kind of be a good, uh, you know, yeah. So sometimes I might say government or, you know, local council or whoever it is that is commissioning the citizens' assembly. Um, yeah, so I hope, I, I, you know, how exactly that works in a lot of detail, I'm not 100% sure, but that's the idea of an oversight body is. Um, kind of generally generally accepted that this is a, the kind of the best way to ensure um, people stick to the kind of transparency and people stick to um, you know the, to, to ensure it's an impartial process. Mm. Thank you. Great. Brilliant. All right. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to move on to Lennart's question, if that's cool. Um, do you want to say it yourself, Lena? I'm looking at number 11. So, um, yeah, I'm generally interested in the mandate of the Citizens' Assembly, like diverse issues relating to that, especially because it's not mainly created by the Citizens' Assembly, I guess, itself. So maybe there are also different cases there. So just very specifically, um, I would like to hear some experiences, maybe also some ideas on what mandates you think would be good candidates um, for, for little experiments in local areas? Maybe you have some, maybe you can just share some experiences, what citizens assemblies on the local level have already debated about in the UK or maybe in Germany. Um, but then maybe you can also say a little bit more about what you think should be the characteristics of a mandate of a local citizens assembly. Should it be brought, as also Miriam like asked in a question, I think, further up, further down? Or should it be very specific, like um, focusing on agriculture, or whatever? Um, but yeah, so maybe you can share some experiences there. That would be nice. I just want to jump in just quickly, just to um, just to encourage anyone who doesn't understand a question or anything that's being said at any point in the call. I just want to encourage you to sort of jump in and, and not get left behind. <clears throat> a random thing I just forgot to say at the beginning. <laughs> Please carry on. Yeah, Linda, please. Uh, you're muted. Me now, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not muted, right? You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so let, can I just clarify that that question was about the, the topic and the question put to the Citizens' Assembly? Yeah, um, seems some nods, I think. Um, so basically, um, the question could, basically, it can be as broad as you like, um, but it's very important that if it is something broad, obviously that's going to take people a lot longer to kind of, you know, understand the whole concept and figure out what exactly they want to talk about and what is important. And that will take them maybe uh, extra time to kind of hone in on the key core issues. And so if it is to be a very broad topic, uh, you know, people must have a sufficient length of time to deal with that properly and at the same time if you give you know if it's a very very narrow question um sometimes that leaves very very little options and then actually you know in order to achieve uh you know that in order to achieve something by a certain date maybe there's actually you know if it's so narrow that maybe there's only one option available so then you don't even need to have a citizen assembly on that because there's only one real option um and um yeah so kind of striking a balance in between those two things i think is best where the assembly should have it should be a kind of a relatively specific question um, so that, you know, it's not too broad and it's just not a whole overwhelming topic um, that would take months to kind of figure out. But also you don't want something where it's very prescribed and the citizens' assembly, you know, they have an option of one or they have an option between two different policies and that's it, you know. Um, so it's important that it... it it's also important that the assembly have maybe a little bit of a flexibility um, themselves to decide things. Um, so hold on a sec, let me back up a little bit. Um, it should be, it's, it's, it's the people who are commissioning the citizens assembly have say in you know, what, they, what they want to know about from the assembly. So they have a little bit of input um, or, or generally they kind of set the question and then the citizens assembly experts that are designing the process might help them shape that uh, to make it, you know, most effective. Um, but also the assembly, once they've kind of had a little bit of background information and they've got into it, they should also have some power to be able to direct the direction of the assembly. And um, for example, they might, yeah, like I kind of said a little bit earlier about um, the select committees that they were loosely going to be asked um, how to get to 2050, but they might also be asked about, you know, is this target, you know, do you want to go faster than this target? Do you want to achieve more than that? Do you want to be more radical? And um, so there, there's a little bit of you know, flexibility with the around the framing of the question um, and i think i think that that's really that's a really key thing and then also that this um they should also be able to choose the experts uh that they want to hear from so so a certain amount of it you know to get them into it first um they will hear from experts which will be arranged and um, but after that they might um say oh we want to hear more from this type of experts we want to hear more about renewable energy or we want to hear more about x y or z and then um yeah the, the the organizers will have to go sort that out for them basically so uh yeah it's kind of a very it, and it should be quite flexible in terms of the agenda who's setting the agenda and the question and how much the ass assembly can kind of feedback on that process and direct it themselves. Great. Um, thank could, you. I, sorry, could I follow up on this just yeah. briefly? 
Yeah. Um, because I just um, there hasn't been a citizens assembly yet pushed through by XR in the Netherlands, so I can't really picture it. Um, if we approach the local government and we say, okay, we want a citizens assembly, then we have to frame in a way what the citizens assembly is going to debate about. So for me, we could say, okay, either we want to have some kind of um, you know long-term implemented citizens assembly that just sits and or is just created again and again to discuss about different topics. Or what for me looks more likely is that we just pick a specific topic, basically that we as XR say, okay, we want the Citizens Assembly to discuss a specific topic um, or maybe like broadly defined. So I just wonder, like the way you described right now is that some kind of local government, if I'm not wrong, uh, would frame uh, the actual mandate of the Citizens Assembly. Um, but um, how do you say it? Wait one second, please. Um, yeah, I just wonder if it doesn't make sense to maybe make more sense if we as XR approach the local go uh, government and come already up with a mandate ourselves. Um, and if there are maybe cases where this happened like this in the UK as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. So we are demanding a citizens assembly on climate and ecological justice um, and yeah, so in, in that sense, we are setting the question um, and it is that we want uh, also like more specifically, we want a citizens assembly on how to halt biodiversity loss and achieve greenhouse gas neutral by 2025, which is demand two. So we want uh, a citizens assembly on how to achieve demand two, essentially. Um, so, yeah, this is a good point that uh you know that's what we're demanding and that's what we're pushing for and the government uh the government or the local council or whoever is might agree to give us that um and use that question or they might decide to alter it slightly hopefully not um you know they might have one on climate and ecological justice and uh but they might leave the target date open for example and so yeah yeah uh, I'm sorry, I hope I, does that answer your question or was there a little part that I'm forgetting maybe? So all the local citizens that were created in the UK always had this broad, uh, sorry, I from one second, yeah. And I just to check in quickly because you've reminded me of something else I wanted to say that is uh, we are also hoping that we will get a citizens assembly in which you have um, a, group, a, a, lot, a very large group of people who are come together and they learn about this climate science altogether, first off, to give them a sense of the urgency. And then um, what we're hoping for is, is this design um, mm -hmm. in which you'll kind of have several citizens panels within the citizens mm -hmm. assembly and you might have a citizens panel of maybe 50 to 100 people and they would be uh, they would be addressing the question of how to hold biodiversity loss and achieve greenhouse gas neutral by 2025 on the topic of transport and you'll have another one on agriculture and another one on power and another one on housing so actually we'll have a very large citizens assembly that has multiple panels within it and that are each discussing different topics and we think it's best to do it this way because of you know you know we we drastically need to change so many things about our society and how it's run and to give this all to one set of assembly members would be definitely like information overload and it might just take a long process you know they will be having a citizens assembly on these different topics sequentially, which would take too too long. So we want to run these citizen panels um, kind of simultaneously, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, yeah, maybe you can come back with your, what was the rest of that question? I think it's fine also to leave it to that. Um, but it's definitely already really helpful. I'm just really interested in concrete best practices on how citizens assembly to implement on the local level. But thanks a lot. No way. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Miriam, you've patiently been 
uh, waiting and, and I, I see your questions you've added. Um, I feel like we've, we've been very close to number 16 around the kind of, I, I actually just, I'll hand over to you and uh, just um, please be free to just bring in all of your questions in the order that feels appropriate. Go ahead. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think we've already touched on the question that I wanted to ask as question number 14, but um, I think I'm not completely clear about it still, but it's also very difficult, I guess. Um, so I was wondering, um, Linda, you mentioned how a citizen assembly could be structured into sub panels, because of course, it's a very complex issue. And that's also something that always I find very difficult about the issue. And um, I'm a little bit um, concerned that um, the citizen assembly at some point makes a decision, let's say, okay, we have a sub panel dealing with power and it makes the decision, okay, we we get rid of of any type of fossil power immediately, which would be in a good, good thing in a way. But then, of course, you also have this sort of dimension of people losing their jobs. So you need another policy to deal with that. Is that then still the job of the citizen assembly or is that then the job of the government? That is something that I find quite difficult to sort of wrap my mind around. Yeah, that's a that's a really great question. And um, so why were we, we've kind of reworded the demand to include the word justice and um, because it really should be about a just transition, both nationally and internationally and um, internationally in includes kind of taking responsibility for all of the emissions which are um, imported to the UK. Um, but leaving that aside, the issue of people's jobs, this is really an opportunity to, you know, it just, it's not all doom and gloom, essentially. I think this really can be a, a really positive thing and, and a lot of jobs could be, although jobs will be lost, jobs will also be created. And in my mind, it's just really important that we don't, repeat what happened with Margaret Thatcher and uh, shutting down the coal mines. And, you know, obviously it was it was just mass unemployment. And obviously those people needed help to find other work. So um, it would be really good to have. Uh, um, so when we talk to uh, Chris Shaw, who's doing the Citizens Assembly on the commission by the select select committees, we also mentioned that you should have social justice experts there. Um, and so they should be talking about all of the social justice issues related to climate change and also related to the, the transition to a, a zero greenhouse gas um, society. And in my mind, that would look like providing training courses um to people who are being made redundant in one sector and helping them to upskill so that they can find more employment in in many other sectors or uh, you know um in other sectors such as uh, renewables and you know creating you know building building windmills and and that type of thing and um, so i you know we're keen to also be advocating for that to be a, a big part of, you know, that it, it shouldn't just be, I guess this kind of comes back to, you know, who has a say over what experts are included. And we're very much advocating for the fact that it should be, you know, obviously there should be climate experts, there should be experts on different climate policies. Um, and within that there will be climate uh, um, people presenting about maybe more of the technological solutions but we're also hoping that you know it, the point is advocated that we can't be relying on these technological solutions because generally they're not scalable yet and it's it's a risk to gamble that you know that we will have them in the future and also that there should be these uh, social justice experts who are highlighting um, the kind of more human and the psychological elements of how people will, you know, the fact that we need to be taking care of people and um, you can't just say, okay, let's just increase, uh, you know, let's just tax all carbon intensive activities and we just put a blanket tax across all of them because obviously there will be people who 
um, you know, there will be a little old ladies uh, who are out in the countryside and using their car to get around is the only way that they have to connect to, you know, their neighbors and to go down to their shops. So there's a lot of these aspects that need to be taken into consideration um, to ensure that, you know, we're really targeting the, you know, the people at the top who can afford it and we're we're somehow making um you know we're taking into account that there are a lot of people in society who can't afford you know they, they shouldn't be punished for driving cars and things because that's maybe the only option that they have if they're living in a rural environment and that people need help transferring transitioning to the next uh the next stage of society, basically. Right. Did that answer your question? Thanks a lot for explaining, Linda. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. I guess the question that I was also grappling with is sort of surrounding mandate. Um, so I was wondering, for instance, one potential solution to the labor or the, to the job loss problem that, that might come up is the introduction of a universal basic income is one potential mm. solution. Now, would the Citizen Assembly have a mandate to the site to introduce such a universal basic income? I don't know. That is sort of the thing I was sort of thinking about, but uh, I guess it's also difficult to say at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, so I don't really know the answer to that. I guess it would just depend on yeah what exactly is the what exactly exactly the citizens assembly has been tasked with and how broad that is because obviously you know maybe a universal basic income doesn't uh, you link directly to um you know the whole climate issue but it does definitely as you're as you're saying link in with kind of how are we going to help people you know, transition to to a, a greenhouse gas society, and perhaps, yeah, universal income could play a role there. Um, I guess it's quite open, and in my mind, I I kind of see that we will probably have citizens assemblies, maybe on more, you know, the kind of. I I just imagine maybe this coming down the line a little bit once we've had a few citizens assemblies, and we can obviously. I mean, there's a lot to be done first off that the government can do is just stop, stop extracting. You know, there's a lot of kind of basic policies that need to probably come first and then further down the line, perhaps this is something that is put on the table. So yeah, it would be a good suggestion, I think. Thanks a lot. Does that answer all of the questions alive in you right now, Miriam, or is there? more on that. I could up. go on if we still have time. <laughs> um, well, so we're five minutes past six, but just a reminder that anyone who feels like they would like to leave now, um, please, or in five minutes or any time, uh, please just drop off like Les did. You're welcome to do that. Um, I see no reason to cut us off if there's still value. Um, we're exploring. Um, a little reminder just that there's a chat on the side uh, so if you haven't seen any of the useful notes and links that are going up, uh, just pop open the chat in the video call. The button is on the top left corner. Um, it kind of auto hides itself. So you might need to wiggle your mouse cursor. Um, so yeah, I, I would propose that and, and just hand back to you, Miriam, if there's, if there's a little deeper you'd like to go into that, I'd welcome you to. Thank you. Actually, I, yeah, my, my second question was more related to what are the, the sort of agreements that, that we definitely need to have made with the government before installing a citizens' assembly. I think a lot has to do with sort of how binding the decisions would be in the end. And I know that XR already has a range of proposals of what should happen. Um, for instance, if the citizen assembly votes for something with 80%, then it should be implemented. Um, but I guess that's the sort of agreement that needs to be made beforehand. And I recently saw a documentary, I think it was the Irish case. And um, I don't know if that documentary was correct or not, but um, from what I understood, quite a few of the recommendations that were made 
by the Irish Citizens' Assembly regarding climate change uh, are still waiting to be implemented. But maybe I'm, I'm also not up to date on that. So I was wondering if anyone has some recommendations on, on yeah, things that need to be definitely, I don't know, agreed with government, maybe made a contract about before the whole thing even starts to, to be put into practice. I can I can just speak a little bit on that too, although I'm not. Um, yeah, so like you said, we're what we're kind of have specific, specific things that we're advocating for, and um, why we're not advocating that it is uh, legally binding because that would probably take two years to you know to get that enacted as law, um, which we just don't have. I think we're more or less happy that you know if we could get the government to commit to addressing the citizens assembly and telling them exactly what they're going to do with those recommendations um that would be a great that would be great um especially because it would be really motivating for the assembly to you know at the start of it they they hear from government representatives of you know what what will be done with the recommendations and so they understand that it's not just a box ticking exercise that it should be you know that their 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 recommendations will have um some power but yeah it is it is definitely a a, a tricky thing also that we don't necessarily we're not necessarily necessarily going down the route of having it um um no sorry never mind um Yes, yeah, so but obviously that would be kind of you know you would have to take government on their on the word. It's kind of a gentleman's agreement, as it were, that um you you know if 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 they are st getting up and stating publicly what they are going to do with those recommendations, I think it will be almost just as good to kind of um hold them you know to hold them to that because you know if they stated it publicly um and this assembly is getting a lot of media attention if they are not following what they said they would do with those recommendations we definitely have cause to be back out on the streets and to be um you know making make you know making a lot of disruption around that um but yeah how to get them to agree to that in the first place um i guess again it's just kind of the fact that a we need to be out and demonstrating what power we have and the fact that actually a lot of people are behind this a lot of people are out on the streets making a fuss because they want the citizens assembly to have power so then I guess the next step is going and talking to them and kind of ar arguing that point um, and also arguing definitely that, you know, this is necessary for the Citizens Assembly to really know that, to take it seriously and to know that they they have power. Um, so it, it, it kind of feeds in a little bit to the legitimacy of the Citizens Assembly. Um, which, you know, officials are keen to see because if you know the, the citizens assembly has to be legitimate in the eyes of everybody and um yeah if you can kind of get them to commit to it it will also show the general public that they are serious about this and it will hopefully get you know kind of broader public support then as well however this is a bit of a tricky issue because some people say that you really shouldn't you know assemblies really shouldn't have power because they are a select as you know they're 100 people or however many at the end of the day representing the 66 million in the case of the uk um so you know if they do come up with some recommendations that are not supported more broadly um by the wider public that can be a tricky issue in which you know the the, the assembly having power can maybe yeah it, it's so some citizens assembly experts actually advocate against the citizens assembly having you know direct legislative power or having a lot of power because because of you know the fear of 
potential bu- pu- public backlash. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's really quite a tricky one that we're still figuring out. Um, yeah, so actually just to add that we're meeting again, the National Citizens Assembly Working Group are meeting again with experts for a second time to kind of design the Citizens Assembly that we want to propose. Um, we're doing that j- this Monday. And um, so we're hoping to get a lot of these things solidified on Monday and, and might be able to uh, release some news around that, um, hopefully shortly. And what's the best way for people to make sure that they uh, are receiving all of that news, Linda? Um, so I've posted up above, I've posted the uh, link for the base camp. Um, which is generally where we will be posting information. Um, oh, sorry, I just noticed that that's actually the wrong one. So please don't click on that one. Um, yeah, so what the one you want is the Citizens Assembly uh, reception desk. And uh, that's where we'll kind of you also look out. We're hoping to have a new Citizens Assembly, uh, not, not a section per se, but. Um, uh, we we should be kind of included in the what's it called uh, recommended reading or the recommended content section of the external newsletter. So may look out for uh, some news in that. And um, but also here, if you click the, this base camp link um, that I that I've just shared. Um, that's where you can that's kind of our general citizens assembly reception desk for internal communications uh around citizens assemblies and you can yeah just check there just ask questions there also i should share the discourse with you which i'll just get up now this course is another platform which we've created to allow people who want to specifically for people who want to organize local citizens assemblies and um yeah, so you should be able to, uh, that's a moderated forum, uh, kind of. So you should be able to ask some questions there and uh, keep up to date. Basically, Basecamp would be the best place to keep up to date with new information and plus the newsletter. And then Discourse is where you can ask more questions and things like that um, and have more have more of a discussion and kind of, share things amongst local um yeah share share things amongst people who are also lobbying for local citizens assemblies great um yeah joe go. yeah so um I, I put in the side this this question i uh, should xr at one point uh, work into the solutions i mean not do the research but get together most of the papers that other organizations are putting together like friends of the earth like maybe some papers from from um greenpeace and uh, other um more specialized research centers and say look these are the bunch of uh, uh, solutions that would if we apply more or less we will we'll kind of uh, be very positive to society and to the countries in terms of solving the problem. But when this, a citizen assembly goes too far from this, we can say, look, um, it is good that we had a citizen assembly, but it's not going to solve the problem. And we are very far away from it. One example is maybe the Irish ones. Some of the decisions were a kind of uh, good, but not really on the way to, to the solution. So what do you think? Should, should we maybe eventually XR think about putting together these solutions? Yeah, yeah. And um, so there's kind of several things on that. First of all, XR star, thus far has been pretty um, agnostic on and neutral on uh, specific policies purely because we want to be about raising the alarm and just sparking the action and then leaving it up to the citizens assembly to decide specific policies 
when we didn't really want to have a stance on specific policies, possibly because it could be divisive amongst you know, people who would otherwise be on board with us, but, you know, they might disagree with us on, you know, you know, just basically getting into the details and the weeds on specific policies might kind of alienate some people. And so that was one thing about why we kind of hadn't done that up until then. But now we're quite, I mean, there is a lot of people in XOR who want to really work on uh, the policies and they're setting, I think they're setting up a new, um, uh, what's it, yeah, a new working group around that who would be looking at specific policies. And um, so if you want to give me your email, I can put you in touch with someone from that group. Yeah. Um, yeah. The second, the other thing is that we want to introduce a three demand bill. And that would involve, you know, you know we've kind of preliminarily talked to some MPs on that front and they've said, you know, well, is it possible? Is 2025 possible? What policies, what would be necessary for that? And we kind of don't want to say anything on that for reasons I've just mentioned, but it seems like we kind of need to in order to... Um, in order to convince them so well so, so in a way we kind of maybe we're gonna stay a little bit you know like ignore is not advocating or releasing any of these policies but we're kind of trying to encourage people who um believe that 2025 is possible encouraging them to come out and kind of talk about the potential policies that could get us there um so but yeah, if I'm not 100% on this topic, so it's probably best I'll put you in contact with someone who's uh, more dealing with this area. Oh, and on the topic of the Irish Citizens Assemblies, uh, especially the one on climate change, it was, in a way, it's great that we have an, an example to point to, and we, say, we can say like, well, they were actually, um, you know, someone presented to them about nuclear and they didn't choose that option. So that's quite good, I think. And um, but you know, they they actually that was two weekends that they deliberated, that they learned and deliberated for. So to me it's not so surprising that they really didn't come up with anything um that radical. So I guess that kind of comes back to a key point of the design and, you know, advocating for something that uh, a, a, a process that is um, equipped to, to really address the full scale, scale and scope of the problem. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. OK, guys, it's 20 past six um how how has this been has this been useful and helpful yeah cool um i have a i have one last question to sort of try and integrate some of this i guess personally if if uh if that's okay i just kind of basically want to just very briefly sort of whiz through what i'm thinking in terms of next steps for me here in brighton and maybe some of you might relate to this on, in your areas um, and just sort of invite any kind of thoughts or feedback, um, if that's OK, just in our last sort of couple of minutes. Um, yeah, so I'm just thinking with Les and the rest of the people in our group here in Brighton, um, we we continue meeting just a little bit, um, us, us group internally uh, to kind of work out what um, question we would suggest for our citizens assembly here in Brighton, um, just so we can kind of advise on that. And I guess different local areas, different cities are gonna have, some of the local government, the local councils are gonna have different levels of experience, I suppose, in what a citizens assembly is. Like I suppose some of them may have uh, much more experience and understanding of it, others may be kind of starting from scratch, like we have no idea really how to do this, I, I guess. Um, 
and so yeah and then I guess understanding like who we would be working with here in Brighton like would it be sort of them soccer or involve or my society or just sort of trying to map them out there may be more than one option for who would be that independent body who would actually be commissioned by our council here in Brighton and yeah as I understand us as XR sort of rebels would not be really involved very much like once it's kind of being held and organized by them but we can um I mean as a filmmaker I'm actually quite interested to kind of capture the story I don't know if that's even too much conflict of interest but um but yeah so kind of thinking about the question we'd advise just sort of trying to um help connect the count well obviously put pressure on the local council first and foremost that's our number one thing but then also encourage that relationship to form and, and help make that easy as possible i guess connecting our local council with this independent body that would actually hold it um i guess that's what i'm seeing as our sort of next steps and main pieces of of work there what what do you guys think what's your thoughts on that yeah, Linda, go. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to shoot off, uh, um, so I'll leave you to it. But one thing I just wanted to mention before going was that um, there, so we're the National Citizens Assembly Working Group, and a lot of people have been asking it on advice and different things regarding local citizens assemblies, and we kind of don't really have the capacity for that. But there is a guy called Paul who wants to set up a future democracy hub um, which is more a, and working group which is more about embedding uh, different types of democracy be it people's assemblies citizen stories citizens assemblies and getting that kind of you know common practice throughout the country um, and that should be going live I think next week I'll ask him to um update that on the the citizens assembly reception desk um yeah so just to let you know that that's uh, gonna be a thing soon and that that would probably be your best port of call to kind of gain more support and advice um on citizens assemblies um yeah so cool yeah um yeah, I think that's everything then. Uh, it's been really nice and they've been really great questions. So um, if you, maybe you could send me, if, if it ends up, uh, if you end up saving the recording or whatever, maybe you could um, send that loop. That would be really great to kind of, um, yeah, they were just really good questions. So I'm really thankful to all of you. Um, Okay, cool. Enjoy your Saturday night. I'll just say that, um, I'm assuming that you're happy for it to be uh, kept then, the recording. And um, uh, if everyone else is happy, then the link will be in the Google Doc. Um, I think it's okay. good that we kind of keep everything in there. Um, yeah, thanks again so much for cool. your time and your input. Bye. No worries. Cool. Bye-bye-bye. I'll ask uh, if there's any objections to us keeping... The recording of this call as an unlisted YouTube video that is linked to in the Google Doc. Any objections? Okay, great. Awesome. Um, with that, uh, oh yeah, I was just going to share that link. Um, just before we finish the call, just and if there's anything in the chat the chat window on the side that you want to keep now is the time to copy paste that somewhere because uh, that's going to disappear when this call ends um and i think that's about it for me um sorry one thing maybe put the links in the doc right away and you have it there i have a research section on the bottom you know so i put all the links in the document okay cool so um yeah anyone who wants to put resources or links to things can do so in the bottom of the Google Doc. Thanks so much to Lennart for taking those minutes. That's fantastic. Really appreciate that and everybody's questions. Um, should we just... Thanks a lot for facilitating. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you very much. It was very nice. Fantastic. Perfect. Thank you. Nice to meet you, mate. Thanks. Okay, take care. Bye, Lennart. Bye, Miriam. Bye, Joe. I will put the links into the paper if you want. Fantastic. Thank you so much. 
拜拜。Bye. Bye. <laughs>